Hello, my name is Serge Ray, and I'm with the University of California Riverside Center for Geospatial Sciences. And together with my colleague Eli Knapp, we're presenting the workshop on the Python Spatial Analysis Library. In this video, I want to give you a brief overview of what the library is and what we're going to focus on during the workshop. PySAL is a Python library designed to support open source cross-platform spatial data sciences. And we've organized the library into four layers. At the lib component, we have core spatial data structures and the ability to read and write the rich variety of geospatial data formats that you encounter in practice, as well as development of spatial weight structures, which allow us to consider potential interactions between our spatial units uh, and the attributes we're measuring on the spatial units. Next higher up in the library is the Explorer module, and this brings together methods for exploratory spatial data analysis. Here we have global measures of spatial autocorrelation. You have a map pattern and you want to test if the map is random or not, uh, as the methods for autocorrelation allow you to do that. But we also have the local measures, which are designed to detect hotspots. Uh, then we have the third level, which is model, and this is when you want to do spatial econometrics or spatial regression models. And the key notion is that your data is spatially referenced and you want to bring the geographical dimensions of the data sets into the estimation process. Then the final layer of the library is the viz layer, which allows PySAL to link up with a really rich and rapidly expanding visualization ecosystem in, in Python. To give you a sense for the four specific foci of the workshop we're going to plan on doing, uh, we're going to start with spatial data processing. So we'll look at how you can use PySAL to read, say, large point data files, and then use them to detect, say, point and polygon type queries and build up visualizations uh, from, from those sorts of um, spatial queries. So that'll be processing and a little bit of feature engineering based on uh, this geo processing. In part two, we'll look at choropleth mapping and we'll explore the rich array of classification methods you have at your disposal in trying to design an effective choropleth map. Uh, so we'll explore things like the classic quantile uh, equal interval classifiers, but more recent and more modern classifiers such as head tail breaks, Fisher Jenks classification, and spatially constrained classification. We will also examine the role of color schemes and how judicious choice of the color scheme in function of the attribute characteristics is an important consideration in designing effective geovisualizations. The third part of the tutorial will shift to look at exploratory spatial data analysis and get into those local indicators of spatial associations that I mentioned at the outset. Here we'll use data sets such as the, the Brexit vote to try and identify hotspots and cold spots, say hotspots where the vote to leave was high, but also in the neighboring areas, it was also high. So there's a spatial clustering there that we want to detect from a statistical perspective, not simply a visualization perspective. And we'll look at a number of local statistics, um, how you apply them, how you need to be aware of some of the assumptions underlying those approaches. And then in the last part of the tutorial, we'll focus on multivariate problems where, where we'll examine the application of multivariate clustering to multidimensional spatially referenced data. Uh, we'll look at things like aspatial k-means and different types of agglomerative clustering, which are widely used in the, the social sciences, but then consider the introduction of spatial constraints into the clustering so that you have resulting connected components that are geographically connected components, not just connected components in the sense of graph theory. We'll examine how space is introduced into these regionalization problems and explore a couple of large data sets to illustrate their use. So that's what we're planning on doing in the workshop. We're very excited about it. Uh, ahead of time, we'll set up a binder and Jupyter Hub instance so individuals can use that to work hands-on during the tutorial, as well as making instructions for how to install all the dependencies for the workshop ahead of time. Looking forward to seeing you all at the workshop.